Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. ESCOM released its summer prognosis this week, and Terence Creamer joins me to share some of the information shared. Hi, Terence. Hi, Chanel. The forecast delivered by ESCOM looks favourable despite the drought. Yes, I think there was a lot of concern that the drought might have an impact. You know, uh, we are coal heavy as a country, but to run coal fired power stations, you need water. And I think the fact that we've had uh, the, this, this debilitating drought across much of the country is a concern and uh, that sort of energy uh, water nexus is also a concern. But um, Eskim gave the, the sort of view that the dam levels that are dedicated to them are still more than half full and that there's no immediate uh, issue around uh, security of water supply to the power stations. And beyond that, they're saying that the prognosis after we had quite a torrid year of load shedding in the first half. Sort of in the last 100 days, we haven't had any uh, uh, interruption, except for in September, I think September the 14th, we had two hours and 28 minutes, which was a confluence of a whole lot of factors that came together that at, at forced that event. And the outlook for the rest of summer, even though we're going now into peak maintenance period at Eskom, is that there shouldn't be a lot of load shedding uh, well, they, 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 they're not forecasting any load shedding for the rest of summer. But obviously, you know, it's a tight system. And if you have a, a day like we had on that uh, in that September month, where a number of units go down um, in an unplanned way, you know, we are vulnerable still to, to power cuts. And uh, I think that there's still a long way to go in terms of getting the system to where we feel secure um, and that uh, the, the tightness is not a constraint on the economy. How has the situation turned around so radically in such a short few months? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a big question. I think the one, of the, the one answer really lies in the area of demand. We know what's happening in the South African economy. We know what's happening in mining um, and industry. Both are energy intensive and we've seen that neither of those sectors are really uh, producing at levels that they were. So we really have a demand trajectory that's fallen over the last few years. Um, you know, we were always planning for demand growth uh, in this economy, and that's why we're building these Madupis and the Kasulis and the Angulas, which are very, very late. But uh, this lack of demand has really created some space and some relief for Eskom. So I think that is a key factor. Uh, but Eskom is trying to insist that it's not the only factor and that there's an improvement in the way they're running the business. I think that's not really showing through yet in the figures. We know that there's the 80-10-10 plan, which is 80% uh, availability of the plant, 10% planned uh, uh, capacity outages, and 10% unplanned. And we still, that is the war room plan, um, and we're still quite well short of that, I think, in the first half of the year, which was very affected by load shedding and even subsequent uh, in the 100 days, we're not really seeing availability factors close to the 80%. We're more in the 74% type range. Uh, and it doesn't look like there's been a major improvement there, although there's an insistence that it's on an improving trend. And then you've got the, um, uh, the, the, the maintenance, uh, plan maintenance that is also sort of uh, on an on a improving trend. Although I think we've seen a change in strategy from uh, a strategy of maintenance first to one of uh, not quite keeping the lights on that we saw in the past, but one that's framed in this, uh, this uh, mantra of maintenance without load shedding. And I think uh, we're getting the picture that you know, Eskom's being a bit more flexible in the way it approaches its planned outages. And therefore, they're able to create some space and some relief in the system to do that. And whether uh, that's going to be sustainable or not, I think over the long term, we're going to have to wait and see. There are still a number of clouds on the horizon in terms of pricing and planning, though. Yes, we've seen that the long-awaited regulatory clearing account application by Eskom now, this relates to the first year of the five-year uh, multi-year price determination, uh, third, the third one. And we've already had MIPD2 RCA, which led to an increase in the tariff as from April 1 this year. So uh, Eskom's got a tariff approved of 8% over this five-year horizon. And this year we saw it climb uh, to around 12% because they were able to claw back under the uh, regulatory clearing account. They went for a, um, a partial reopener, 
towards, uh, uh, and that was rejected by NUSA. So they're going back to within the regulatory rules. Uh, they're allowed to, if there's been an under recovery or over recovery against the revenue that was allowed for in a determination, and they're saying there's been an under recovery, they're allowed to approach the regulator. They've approached only for the one year, and just for that one year, they're looking to recover nearly 23 billion rand. So that uh, needs to now be de uh, deliberated upon by NERSA. And uh, that if that does go through uh, as, the, as the request is currently framed, and there's no doubt that um, generally NERSA doesn't just give what uh, Eskom wants, but if it does, that would be a 16% tariff increase from April 1. And that would be for direct Eskom customers. And obviously, you know, there's that lag before municipal customers kick in. And then the municipal uh, municipalities have to recover that extra cost. So that would mean even more for very, uh, I think, cash-strapped consumers or residential consumers, but then also businesses. So it's a very bad timing. But I think in the we've, what we've got the indication from is that Eskom's had its bailouts. Um, and I don't think it's going to be very easy uh, for for government to come back and give out more than the 23 billion that's already been uh, gives, uh, injected into Eskom, plus uh, the guarantees that have also been injected into Eskom, as well as the, the subordinated loan being converted to equity. I think that we're now at the sort of end of that, um, sort of the taxpayer paying, and we're back into the consumer paying type phase, but both businesses and uh, consumers are cash trapped. So that's. That's something that we're going to have to watch and see where that goes early next year. Um, the other thing is that this seems to have been a lost year in terms of planning. Um, you know, we have seen that load shedding is no longer a daily reality, but the energy crisis, the power crisis remains. And this year was supposed to be a key year to get a lot of these planning issues out of the way. We still don't have an integrated resource plan visibility and integ uh, integrated energy plan visibility. There hasn't been a release of the, the gas utilization, utilization master plan. So we've still got this uncertainty around the energy space in South Africa and especially the electricity space, which at some point has to be uh, sorted out or we're going to just get ourselves back into a repeat of this uh, uncertainty and what eventually leads to underinvestment um, and uh, that we've seen what the result of that underinvestment is, is these years and years of power and electricity being a constraint on economic growth. And it saps confidence at the same time because of the, the continual threat of power cuts. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.